Hello, everybody. Welcome to another live stream on Genie Vlogger. I am uh, apparently part ghost right now, so let me fix that for you. A little bit out of breath right now. Uh, running just a tad late. I'm sure some of you probably noticed that we're getting started like a minute after the hour. Unfortunately, my dogs know how to uh, how to make me think that they have to go now. Otherwise, they'll go during the stream somewhere in the house. So I took my dogs on a long walk, uh, <laughs> trying to, and they like to sniff everything. So it was, uh, whew. all right. I'm no longer a ghost. Let's say hello to everybody. <laughs> we got a good amount of people in here. We have Disa from Toronto. Shalom. We have Brian Nash, another Canadian here. Sweet, sweet candy. I'm imagining we're going to have a lot of Canadians in here since we're talking John Candy. Uh, we have Have Roots Will Travel from Tucson, Arizona. Welcome, welcome. We have Jarek P. God, I miss John. Yeah, John Candy was great, great. Um, I always, I loved Canadian bacon and I, I never realized he was Canadian until years later. And that just made that movie so much better. <laughs> um, we have Stig here. Hello everyone from Oslo, Norway. We have Camila here from Orland, Norway. Uh, we have Karma here from Nebraska. My request, John passed three years ago, March 5th. Yep. It was your comment in the discord server that led to this. I saw it and I was like, Yes. In the emoji that oh sorry a little doggy i get still kick my dog he's under my feet <laughs> yes yes so uh we have tasha coming in from minnesota steph cat hey hey way to go cv or gv thank you thank you we have old cinderella story from bavaria sharon phillips coming in from new york oh hello karma <laughs> we have alexandra coming in from germany uh ghost hug you can't see it but it's there thank you very much thank you from stern and himmel photographerian so dot de i believe that's germany douche deutsch 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 sorry my terrible pronunciation as usual uh you can always count on john candy for a laugh yeah evan Selp. Uh, hi, Jared from Richmond, Virginia. What was your favorite part of Roots Tech? I haven't gotten a chance to watch your live stream from the conference yet, but I will after the stream. Hard to think of an exact favorite thing, but you know, it's just it's kind of all of it in terms of just hanging out with all these other genealogists and you know, especially a ton of people that with the internet, you know, we we talk and do you know, collaborate on projects and stuff all the time, and then it's like we actually meet in person. So it's it, it's it's a lot of fun yeah but i i can't really think of anything too specific i guess so uh chico de coster sesueda watching from north las vegas nevada i hope i pronounced your name correctly thank you for coming in we have katie gray coming in from ohio listening while at work wonderful to hear and uh seth cat with the pronunciation deutschland i guess give me a thumbs up if that was right deutschland so <laughs> which is kind of funny because I, when I was in Amsterdam trying to speak Dutch, the little, little, little Dutch that I do in Becha, um, I had a couple of uh, my cousins telling me the way that I said some words sounded more German than Dutch. So like the way that I said ick, I guess I was saying it kind of ick, like I-C-H instead of I-K or something like that. So, okay, well, let's, uh, let's jump into the uh, meat and potatoes of today uh and that's gonna be building john candy's family tree as usual i need to do my little try to adjust it so it's as big as possible for the thing okay this is yeah there we go that's good that's good um yeah i don't think you all really need to see down there I'm gonna make myself a little bit bigger, but I'm gonna be on top. There we go. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's good. So, um, we are going to be building the family tree for John Candy, and I didn't look too deep into it, but when I did see on Genie that uh, that there is a um, 
there's nothing on the candy side. What I figured is we can work on building the tree. And then I'll also show how to transfer stuff over into Genie using a uh, smart copy. So this thing, smart copy there. Is it coming through? Can you all see smart copy? Let's see if I... Oh, you all can't see it. You can see me clicking it, but you don't see the drop down menu. Okay, interesting. Well, I guess we'll we'll have to play around with it and see how much you can all actually see. <laughs> so, um, but this kind of goes into a, a good point with how I do my research a lot of the times versus how I used to. I used to work directly from genie.com mostly, and I would build the trees in there. And then over time, I started to kind of find that I had a much better time building the trees in the actual program itself. So, or not the program, in a, I, a building it in a private tree connected to a database that gives hints and then transferring it to Genie. So whether that be Ancestry, which I think I usually end up with Ancestry a lot just because that's the one that has a lot of the the records and a lot of the people do the DNA testing there too. So it's easy to connect it that in there too. Um, but the other one being my heritage, my heritage has a very similar database to, to ancestry in the sense that they host family trees where they also then have a database of records that connects into the family trees. So you can get hints with all of that stuff. So from there, once I build it in that singular private tree, then I'll transfer that over into genie.com. And then that those profiles that are created reference where the information was transferred over. So we've already, from what I had, I just, I wanted to build out and see, you know, could I actually get family ancestry on Charles Ultrabold, Sydney Candy? And actually there was, there was a lot of stuff. Um, like pretty, pretty strong, you know, multiple census records, both in Canada and in England. There was a marriage bond, interestingly enough, between uh, uh, Charles Archibald, Sidney Candy and Jesse Maud Banks, showing the father as William Candy. Um, so this is. I think this is uh, what you get if you order the marriage record. Yeah, this is what you get if you order the marriage from the GRO, so the the General Registry Office of the UK. Um, that which I think I pulled up. Yeah, I've pulled that up on other <laughs> streams. So um, if you order, yeah, if you order from there, I'm not going to go into it. Um, so pretty confident in building out that to, you know, we've got William Candy, uh, ranker profession of father, umbrella maker. And then we see Charles Ultrabald is a billiard table maker, which is pretty cool. So John Candy's uh, grandfather made uh, <laughs> billiard tables. So, yeah, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Okay, so. Um, we've built up to William Candy, and then we have Margaret Ellen O'Brien. And with the 1891 census, we have the family uh, in England. And then same with the 1911 census with Charles with his wife. So I'm going to add in the older family, which there's a lot of children. So for those who are unfamiliar with the UK censuses, they are usually on the one. So 1901, 1891, 1881, 1871, etc. Um, and pretty similar to the U.S. census, you know, slightly different, kind of like each federal U.S. census is anyway. Uh, so we see the Candy family there, uh, although this is the second part of the family. The first part of the family is on this page because it's a big old family. And we have William Candy and Margaret Candy. And there are many, many, many children. So I'm going to go ahead and just get that added on in there. So I'm going to update the births because we, yeah, I didn't have the births. I think I just put in just basic. So do this kind of quick, a little dirty, not super dirty, but just, just dirty enough that it's quick. <laughs> Just dirty enough. All right. 
Um, now, Sydney James Candy, born 1920. Yeah, here we go. So we got the family there. We'll get these kids added in. Not a new person. That must be Maud. So they arrived 1913. And uh yeah, that's good. What are you guys barking about? <laughs> what is it? Uh little dogs. Put some uh put some dog emojis in the chat if you hear my little dogs. <laughs> so all right. So really going to focus on taking the candy name back because I'm kind of curious how far back it goes. So with William Candy, he's born in England, but I believe he dies in Canada. Is that where he passes away? Or no, he passes away in England because the family goes in 1913. So if he dies 1895 we have any death records let's see what other people have this person has a lot of stuff okay so we've got a we've got a death record and there we go william candy right there umbrella maker so he was an umbrella maker 44 years lived at five bath street or place where death occurred, died at 5 Bath Street, 25th of February, 1895. Ceremony performed by Reverend Foster. And then where, where he's buried. So I think that's pretty, pretty good evidence. Uh, let's, wait, no, not image. We want record. Oh, wait, I guess I could have done it from there. I guess I could have done it from there. So let's say the person in your tree, William Candy. You're such a wolf. <laughs> what are you barking about, dude? So funny. Okay. <laughs> so William Candy and Eliza Anderson. Well, there we have parents, William and Elizabeth. Now, can we find anything that shows Anderson for the mother? Nothing right off the bat. Let's go back to this one because this one had a lot of stuff to it. Oh, look at that. Two. This is always a sign of uh, you got to be careful. If they have two of 1851, like two of the same thing, but sometimes it can be other weird stuff going on. So William, Eliza, and William. Oh, that's what we just looked at. William, Eliza, William. William, Elizabeth, William, and Daniel. And this is in Watton, Gloucestershire. Watton under edge glass to Shire. Interesting. So next to them are the Harris's and then Leia broom heavens, Harris's Leia broom heavens. Yeah. I mean, it's certain, you know, I have seen cases of families in the same sense as multiple times. It is very rare. And almost always when you're looking at other family trees, whether it's on ancestry, my heritage, family search, genie, whatever, if they have multiples of the same year record uh, for one person, that's a, that's a red flag. So we have that twice here, two 1851s, two 1881s. And you know, it, it's even less likely that it would happen two censuses, uh, let alone one. So here we have the 1881, which is what we had added 
I believe with all those kids, unless maybe it was the 1891 we did. And then here that's completely different. I mean, William and Rhoda, and it's in the same area. And it is, we do see Umbrella Maker, but the thing is, is I wouldn't be surprised. Well, yeah, Umbrella Manufacturer. So, you know, same family, close relatives. They all work in the similar business. So, you know, yeah, basically it's kind of showing us we got to be, we have to be careful stepping forward because obviously the candy family is a uh, big family. And likely uh, throughout the area in a few ways. So, okay. So with William Candy and Eliza Anderson. All right, let's see. Can we find anything with him with a spouse and a parent? No. 1871. 1861 goes from with parent. I mean, it seems to be. We're going to go with this and we'll see if we can find correlation of William Candy marrying an Anderson. Let me check chat because I haven't checked chat in a while. So why won't you let me check chat? Well, I see, see a lot of dog emojis. <laughs> a lot of a lot of dog emojis. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Evan asked what kind of dogs are they? They're a mixture of mostly miniature poodle, Bichon, Chihuahua, and Pekingese. So I did some dog DNA testing, and I did a video about it a few years back. The biggest reason I had them DNA tested <clears throat> was because they were actually um, found on the side of the road at about four months old, and they were together, and they look very different, but at the same time act somewhat similar in very unique ways that made a lot of us think they must be full brothers. So I did the DNA testing with the main idea of figuring out if they are full brothers, they were full brothers and I did DNA testing to prove it. So you can actually watch that video. So this was before ancestry's pet DNA thing. I went through uh embark DNA, but I also had done an uh, wisdom panel for them because of the plan I set them up with for their medical stuff came with that. Uh, <laughs> hello everyone <laughs> hello steven thank you for jumping in um yeah i have issues with finding someone that should be in the 1920 census but isn't that is an interesting case sometimes with those sometimes you people may just not be in the census for various reasons um you know in the rare case that the enumerator just doesn't do their job right which actually is known to have happened and there's a amazing really interesting blog series done by genealogist Tammy Hepps uh, on her blog Homestead Hebrews, I think it's called. And she found an enumerator who made stuff up and she actually like kind of shows how she figured it out and what probably should have been there. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Um, so it is possible. Maybe they, something happened and they weren't there. Uh, but a lot of times it may just be, issues of indexing or however their name is written or something like that, or just an overly common name. And you just have to really work your way through it. But uh, I had a similar issue with my grandfather for a long time where couldn't find him in the 1930 census, eventually realized that I couldn't find him because he was living in a house with cousins. So there were nothing, there was no one in the house I knew about that, uh, you know, would have made me look at that. Simon Goldberg is my grandfather, but when I analyzed the census records by looking for every Simon Goldberg within a certain age range, living in a, in Philadelphia, and he was the only one, and I was able to correlate through the occupation that he had as a junk dealer, and then I found the descendants of the family that he was living with and asked them to DNA test, which they already had, and then we looked at the comparison, and it was definitely, they were cousins, and yeah, so it, it may be something similar like that, where he, Maybe they're in a house that you just weren't expecting. So, but good luck. Good luck. Um, Gloucester Shaw, not Shire. I, I, <laughs> my pronunciations are terrible, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I see a lot of people tell me how to pronounce it. Hello, ironically, sardonically. 
Uh, yeah, I think everywhere Shire is pronounced sheer. Don't blame me. Blame this bastard language. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, go to Massachusetts and, and, and the, yeah, I, I, that's going to be interesting whenever I go to Massachusetts trying to pronounce all that stuff they have up there. Um, okay. Let's see. All right. So, yeah. So let's get back to this. So, we're going to get this stuff added in. See where it takes us. Because we want to find out if this mother's name truly is uh, Anderson, I think it was. So I'm going to go up to this William Candy. Let's see, something pop up for Elizabeth. No. Nothing yet. <laughs> oh, cool. Established 1821. Umbrella Hospital. W Candy Umbrella and Parasol Manufacturer. That's cool. I wonder if uh, let's see if we can pull up some some more newspaper stuff. It's a candy umbrella. All right. Interesting. So 1894, William Candy 5, Bath Street schoolboy, was charged on remand with stealing from a till in the shop at Rathbone House, Bath Road, on the 29th June, 1911. So, or wait, no. On 11th. Oh, 11th. Or 11th Street? I don't know. The money of Stephen Child, Florence Brabby, assistant prosecutor, say that prisoner called... At the shop several times on Friday, the last time being about high half past five in the afternoon, <clears throat> she saw a prosecutor serve prisoner with a cramp pencil. Prisoner put down a penny, witness put it in the till. It was then that she missed 11 shillings and three dollars from the till. William Candy, umbrella maker, father of prisoner, stated that his son confessed to him that he had taken the money and hid it behind some bricks in Wellington Street. Where it was found, where it was afterwards found. That's pretty. That's pretty funny. So that would be this William Candy here. William Candy, born in eighteen seventy one. Wait, no. William Candy, 18, 1894, and he's 12, so he would have had to have been born 1882. So different? Unless it's this. That's Frank Walter. Look at him. He's a... Is that military? That looks military. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, Army World War I. Frank Walter Candy. Yeah. William Candy 12. This is 1894, so let's see, 1891. 
Interesting. But yeah, here, I mean, here we have Bath Road, Clifton House, Five Bath Street, Clifton Home, Bath Street. It's very interesting. All right, let's see what else. What else can we find? View a Candy's Umbrella Hospital. So we know Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire, <laughs> sorry, all right, let's see, uh, England, there we go, You know what? Let's do this because he, he always seems to be W Candy. Maybe we'll leave the end there. Oh, nice. Uh, no bit. Umbrella Hospital. Mrs. Candy, widow of the late William Candy and her son, begged to thank those customers who for so many years past have kindly extended their patronage to her late husband and to solicit a continuance of their support in the business, which she and her son intend to carry on at the above address. Established 50 years, umbrellas recovered and repairs of all description neatly executed on the shortest notice. China and ornaments riveted and repaired also at 8 Royal Well Palace. Let's make that bigger for people to see. So, very cool. Mrs. Can't. So, this is. So, presumably, presumably, we are talking about Mrs. Margaret O'Brien Candy and then, and her son, which they seem to have a lot of sons. Um, William was the one that seemed to be in trouble, which maybe this William, but maybe it was one of these other boys because he seemed to be had to have been born in 1882. But either way, then we have John Candy. So John Candy's great grandparents. This is his great grandmother and either a great uncle or maybe grandfather. Something like that. Yeah, something. Something, something. Um, and let's see some sort of a case. Mark Lane versus William Candy, 1883. This was a claim for rent. Judgment was obtained on the 18th of May for between one pound and two pounds. And installments were ordered of four shillings a month. Defendant said he had 12 children and his trade, that of an umbrella dealer, was bad. His honor gave defendant a fortnight to find the money and reduce the installments to three shillings a month. Wow. The story of the, the candy family. Let's see. Oh, this is what we read before. All right, let's, uh, let's extend or now. Nah, All right. So we've got William candy. Now, presumably we have this older generation of candy. See what's up with Daniel Candy. William and Elizabeth. Watton Under Edge. All right. I'm going to just do this a little dirty and add this in, assuming that this is the right family. Although we did see that that other person had multiple census records. For the same years, for the same people, although I don't see any repeats here, but we do have this 1891 and, oh, okay, we don't have 18, so, all right. Oh, we're getting lots of siblings, so that's good, and let's, John Candy. Okay. Ooh. William Candy and Elizabeth Long Phillips. Okay. 
Okay. So I don't think we were originally looking for Phillips. Because I think from what we saw, it was supposed to be Anderson. Um, I do see a few folks asking about uh, Canada and England. Yeah, I kind of didn't cover Canada too much. <laughs> I kind of jumped straight into England. But yeah, LML's right. They came in 1913. Um, and uh, yeah, so they, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So these are FIPS. FIPS. What was it? Maybe it was the other generation that we thought was... Or maybe it's just that uh, the hint that we were given was incorrect. Okay, it's this person. And this is the person that we we were questioning because they had multiples of the same year for the same family census. But the one thing is they don't have any repeats of the children, which is often another issue with it. But are they doing a mixture of children with these? Probably not so much. 1881 has a lot. So let's see the other 1881. Stephen, Kate, Florence, and Emily. Yeah, see, I... wonder if they figured it out. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. But okay, so all of those have all of those have Anderson, Anderson, Anderson for the mother. But then what does this say? What does this baptism say? Uh, well, this is in the 1700s, so it wouldn't make sense for it to be them. 1753, yeah. Uh, we'll ignore that. <laughs> um, if we accept it already, it's just censuses. And the burial. So you know what? Let's uh, let's take a. What are we looking at? Eighteen forty-eight. Plus or minus two years, surname at birth, Kende. Male. All right, let's see. What do we get? Ooh, look at that. Look at that. We're mostly William Kende. Oxford. Oxfordshire. Shear. Shire. Shar. Shah. Oxford. Um. William was married twice, and his father is also William. That might be where your confusion is coming in. Um, okay, interesting. Yeah, I guess I'll have to see. Well, part of the confusion is mostly just looking at that <laughs> that one person who has the same, you know. So does that mean that he was married to two, like he was a polygamist he was married to two separate women at the same time because 1881 william and margaret umbrella manufacturer and 1881 
Mary DeRota, Umbrella Maker. Oldest child's 14 in this one. So for the big family. Yeah, so it, was, it would cover because the, the age range. So is that what you're saying? He had two... He had two wives at the same time. Do you, uh, I mean, I'm sure part of the confusion is definitely that there's a lot of Williams, uh, William candies in general. So, but I mean, I'm just at this point, I'm just trying to figure out is Elizabeth an Anderson or the other? Because so, it could go either way. Because here we have a marriage of William Candy and Elizabeth Longfelt or Phipps. Spinster, wool picker, lives on Church Street. Father John Long. When was this? September 7th, 1844. Let's see. What were we looking for? Yeah, like 1848. What did I put in there? 1848, okay. Oh, wait, is this? Yeah, all of England and Wales, okay. Watson. So I'm not sure. I mean, we've got a few very we we have a few William Candies. Mother's maiden name doesn't match <laughs> either Phipps or uh, either Phipps or the uh, Anderson one. Phillips. Oh, was it Phillips or Phipps? I thought it said Phipps. Yeah, it's, it's Phipps. Whoever transcribed this just... As someone who has the middle name Philip, I can recognize very quickly that is not Philip. That is Phipps. That is Phipps. So I'm presuming that must be it. I mean, I know Brian... Yeah, well, there's three Williams in successive gen generations. Um... So, you know, I mean, we've got to, yeah, we've got to figure out which one's which and whatnot. But at this point, it's not really about that as much as figuring out who's the, who's William Candy, born in 1848, who is his mother. Likely an Elizabeth, but is it Elizabeth Anderson or is Elizabeth Phipps? So that's what I'm trying to figure out at this point. And it seems the records are pointing more towards Phipps. But then we have these other family trees by people that have questionable things in there, like this person having two 1851s and 1881 censuses for this one William Candy. So if there are multiple men of the same name in the same area, if they're in three successive generations, that should be fairly easier to figure out. But if they're of the similar ages, you know, where it's, you know, there's like, Sure, three in one family unit of successive generations, but then there could also be cousins of with the name William Candy and such like that. So somebody somewhere is getting stuff mixed up. And so now it really is just a question. Is it this Anderson? Although I guess one other thing to consider is, are people putting Anderson because maybe a married name or something after somewhere else, but No. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Uh, the father's name on that marriage was John Candy, not William, like it sounds like you're looking for. Well, so, I mean, I, I wasn't necessarily looking for William because um, I was thinking that the discussion of three successive generations is this William to this William to this William. And so the William we were looking at the marriage was this William, which according to the potentials, so the hint that Ancestry is giving us, they're saying it would be a John. So I wasn't discounting it because based on what Ancestry is saying, it would be a John. And then I think some of the other records. So we have this record, which I think is just an index but that's showing John Candy and Maria, a birth date, a baptismal date. And then here we have we have that baptism showing John and Maria. Somewhere. Here we go. So Caroline, daughter of John Candy and Maria are there. Multiple candy one. Okay. So two children of John Candy. Caroline, daughter of John Candy and Maria, his wife of the parish. Interesting. Yeah, I've never seen uh births and baptism records like this. So it's always interesting the the variations you find on vital records like births and deaths and stuff and how it's kind of written slightly different. So it takes a little while to kind of be like, okay, what is this? How is this actually going? <laughs> what is this saying? So. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, really, so that's the main, like, if we were to break it down to the most simplest form of what are we trying to accomplish now, it is to identify the mother of William Candy, born 1848, died 1895. Um, and more specifically, confirm that it is in a, that his mother is Elizabeth, and even more, confirm her maiden name. Is it Anderson or Phipps? Um, because that should help a bit too, because there is also the possibility that there's a William Candy married to an Elizabeth Anderson. And I've just happened to decided to add the Phipps uh, version of things and that I'm on, I'm in the wrong, which is one of the difficulties when you do kind of the quick and dirty method is sometimes you can end up in spots like this where it's like, okay, there's the possibility that I put in things slightly wrong. And now I'd have to go back and delete a whole lot or things like that. Um, so let's, let's jump over to family search. We have 345. Okay. I'm not family tree DNA, family search. So, William Candy, 1848. Okay. What is this doing? There we go. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So we have William Candy. We have the 1851 census. So then we have a William and Eliza. So the other question is, let's actually do this. We're going to do birth. Delete that. We're going to do 1844 to 1852. We just want to see 
how many William Candies were born in that time? We have a lot of results right now. Um, so let's let's do exact. That didn't really change much. <laughs> let's do that. So 320. And... Mm, how do I want to? All right, well, let's see. So we have, yeah, here we have a William Candy, son of James and Catherine Candy, born 1844, St. Philip's Marsh. And then this one, 1851. How many other 1851s? Okay, so just two that I'm seeing right off the bat. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going through and kind of seeing how many possible William Candies within a general range would we be seeing. So now we see another one, 1851, but now we're looking at Somerset, England. So let's match birthplace exactly. So now we have six. So really we're looking at two, two William Candies living in Gloucestershire um, who are about this similar age. So we have this one. Uh, this is, wait, William Candy three years old. Oh. Okay. Ah, uh, it's on find my pass. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a find my past, uh, whatchamacallit. So, okay. So it's behind, uh, Behind a paywall, it seems to be. All right, so then we're just gonna we're gonna go through. Do a similar thing here. Oh yeah, and uh, eighteen forty-eight. We'll do five years. Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire, Gloucester for sure. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Gloucestershire. Traditionally, Bristol straddled the border of southern Gloucestershire and northern Somerset. Um, okay, so census records. All right, now we only see the one in here. And this is one of the interesting things, too, when it comes to searching on uh, family search versus ancestry is you can get slightly different results. So if we were looking just ancestry, we would have been like, oh, OK, it seems like there's, you know, maybe a couple of guys because 1911, we have a few, you know, we have William Robert and William Candy and Alfred William. But really, it seems like there's just one William Candy living in Watton under edge, which could be the case. Uh, at least born 1840, whatever. Although that's definitely not him because he dies 1895. So, he's born 
painter, painter, painter. So yeah, so we we haven't quite gotten anything to give us enough on that, but let's do a little fan research and we will look at the siblings and see if maybe that gives us a better idea of the mom's maiden name. Now there is this... Uh, McMillan over here. She's 75. Okay, John Candy, Emil Candy, John Candy, Elizabeth Mac McMillan. Maybe her, maybe not. I guess we'd have to see spouse Emily Cornick. Father William Candy. Let's see, does it show the father is an umbrella maker? Wait, no, that's not what we want. We want this. So... Um, okay. There we go. Yeah, that happens sometimes. They put in the wrong thing. So, all right. So we have John Candy, widower at the age of 34, peddler, St. James, William Candy, clothier, clother. Clothier. Clothier. Much clothier than others. <laughs> um, okay, so let's uh let's jump over to Daniel Candy. Let's see, let's see if we can find anything through Daniel. Um spouse Cecilia Davies, father William Candy. What about their mother? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, John, who's the next youngest? All right, Joseph. All right, yeah, I mean, it's really, at least through what we're getting here. Now, this is, you know, these. this is just the, the, the tip of the iceberg going through ancestry and family search and that kind of stuff. Um, granted, you know, getting into the GRO kind of stuff does make it a little bit more interesting i guess you could say uh let's see if looking at the maiden names so we're looking for phipps and anderson 1848 let's do a little bit earlier and phonetically similar search Uh, oh, good question. Is GRO access like you've got free or paid for? This is free. Uh, searching like this through their site is free, but ordering the records does cost money. Um, takes a little while to get going. So, but yeah, no, getting this, this part's free. You just set up a, a, a quick little account. Um, and then when you find records that you want, you can order it directly from the site. Like it'll pull it up and once we get some results, I can show you. But one of the things is this site's super clunky. They did kind of an improvement on it. 
not that long ago, but it really didn't improve that much. And I mean, you can look at it. You can see that it's definitely a old school kind of HTML based website. And, you know, so it's not not the most advanced. Um, so I'm still still going. Can you see that it's moving? Yeah, you can see the the wheel, the wheel, the wheel. Um, never used it. My family isn't British despite me living here, but my other half is. Yeah, it's super useful if you had family that lived in England. So, okay. So yeah, kind of like I was expecting a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of results. Here we have Alderson, but that's a Joseph Raynard candy. So, yeah, but then you can see here's the details on ordering stuff. Hopefully that's let's make this bigger for everyone, make it a little easier to read. OK, so we here we've got so we saw an Alderson. Now we have a Phipps. Now, this is a John Candy. Dursley. We're looking at uh very it could be this John Candy, but where's Dursley? So let's see. Dursley. Okay, that's the area, I think. I think. <clears throat> So, okay. So that Phipps. Oh, look, and there we we have a William Candy under Phipps, but this is this one's born 1845. All right. Well, let's see this cuz you can put in mother's maiden name. Let's see Phipps. Hopefully this will be a little bit quicker with the Phipps one. What are the Phipps? That's the other thing we can search too. We can do a search of candy, spouse, Phipps. Okay, and we just get other other family trees. All right, that's what we saw before. Here's the marriage bond with the Phillips part, Elizabeth Long Phillips residence. Oh, they don't have a they don't have a browse this collection option. Ah, shame. All right. Well, let's see. And uh, birth year. Let's do eighteen forty four to eighteen fifty four. Eighty one. Hmm. 
Then, okay. Oh, let's, <laughs> we're just going to do exact matches then. If that's the case. So interesting. So we have these two. Digital image. Two pound fifty. Uh, okay. Um, but all right, you know what? <clears throat> we have added a good amount of stuff in. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to get this stuff added in of what we have. So we're adding in from Charles Archibald, Sydney. Charles Archibald. And unfortunately, I we're going to have to see, but I don't think, uh, I don't know if anyone's really going to be able to see, really see what I do here uh, from what I saw, but we'll see. So basically, I'm using what's known as smart copy. And it's a way for you to transfer information from various uh genealogy sites in into genie doesn't look like you guys can see that right now um, <laughs> i guess we'll see if not we'll just have to we'll just have to go with it Also known as Jesse Mall. That's the same. That's the same. Children update. Nothing to update. Okay. All right. So not sure if you all saw any of that. If you did, awesome. If not, well, I guess too bad. <laughs> um, let's see. Have you ever done one of those uh, where the tree goes to non-English speaking lands? Yeah, so I have. But in terms of transferring it over, you have to be a bit more careful. Um, so... Let's take a view of Charles Charles Archibald's tree now. So should have, there we go. We have siblings, parents, all of that added in. And then hopefully we can see, you know, is there something that overlaps the not the same people? Um same Let's see do we have any overlap here yeah it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it all right so we're gonna add in more anyway we'll go up to the parents okay Oh, no, I mean one of these episodes where you build a tree of someone famous. Um, yeah, I mean, we did. Uh, I guess it was my own tree where we got into the Amsterdam archives. Um, I think with a lot of these ones, we haven't dove too deep in anything outside of the English speaking stuff. Um, 
yeah, I mean, part of it's just been that with the live stream stuff, even though I try to prepare a bit for it, part of the idea is that this is something I can do that's enjoyable that I don't have to spend a whole lot of time prepping for, <laughs> just, just trying to work on other stuff. So um, it's kind of hard to really get into that kind of stuff without prepping a bit unless I'm already familiar with most of that stuff. But I, I, I think we have a, a little bit, but I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, and one of the other fun things is, you know, with genealogy, it covers so much. So I know in a, in a few streams, I've had folks that are commenting like, you know, oh, well, I found this somewhere. I found this elsewhere. And, you know, people are looking up stuff at the same time that I am. And then also on the Discord channel that uh, we have, the Genie Vlogger Discord, we do have, we tried to do continuing forms of all this stuff. Um didn't quite work out the greatest, but we do have a lot of people who do kind of continue doing the different research things. So, um, yeah, so a little bit, not, not a whole lot, not as much as I kind of <laughs> probably would like to cover that stuff, but it's also, like I said, partly just cause I need to have some sort of experience in it for the most part beforehand. All right. So we're looking at all this stuff and close that. So yeah, if I wanted to spend a bit of money on this, I'd order these digital records. Um, don't think I would order anything from anywhere else, uh, especially since you know these two both have the FIPS name and located in Dursley area. And then let's actually let's do this. Let's see what what we get. Changing it up a bit. So. Nothing there. So it didn't really have a whole lot of kids, I guess. Or whatever. Yeah, nothing. There. Okay, so really just those two. You can get the GRO records via Ancestry, but it costs a lot more. Well, I guess you just have to have a um, Ancestry membership. Are you saying you can uh, order it directly through Ancestry? Um, which I guess could go either way. <laughs> it could go either way. Um, but I'm guessing it's that you can order them through Ancestry, which I'm sure if you do that, Ancestry is going to charge you a premium on that. Okay, so let's see if I can have any new information to add into Genie from here. We'll add that stuff in. Okay, so that should transfer all that over. So we do that. We'll see a whole bunch of stuff added in. There we go. We got some stuff added in. Let's see if we have anything indicating. Of course, there's going to be multiple Williams. But we did look at that earlier. Okay, we do have this. That's definitely our William. 1847, 1895. That's got to be our William. Which is ours is 1848 to 1895. Son of, brother of, and then half brother. Oh, okay, that's kind of what I thought, Catherine. Yeah. Hello, Charlie. Evening, evening. Okay, so we have this William Candy. And then, okay, so getting back to what we saw before, we did see the two census records of William for 1881, I think maybe it was. Well, we had two for 1851 and two for 1881, uh, at least based on what that one person had posted. One family, Rhoda, wife, the other, Elizabeth, which they have both in here. 
But the thing that really threw us off more than anything was that we have two surnames for this possible Elizabeth. We have this Anderson, which it seems that's what they went with. Or we have the Phipps version, which seems to possibly be more likely just based on the fact that we actually have a record backing that up, whereas I have yet to see a record backing up the Anderson, um, which obviously that doesn't necessarily make one, you know, actually correct. It just gives us that that view that, OK, we're getting an actual record Phipps name. So something seems odd. Um, but then, yeah, we saw with the GRO records go back to that because it was 1846 we did that so search so these two these two john and william candy and dursley so possibly this william is our william this william so and then who the other was john yeah and there's no John in this household in 1851. And there should be, unless he possibly died as a youngin. So, yeah, the fun of this kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, so I think we're gonna we're gonna change gears from the candy line. Yeah, Anderson is the one on Wiki Tree, which of course is open for revision. Yeah, let's take a look at wiki trees. Because I think uh, I think they had John Candy as one of their uh, challenge weeks, didn't they? Didn't they do a, a John Candy challenge week? I could be wrong. So yeah, they have Anderson. So let's see. So now we have a family search record. Okay, so we have Elizabeth Anderson marrying a William Candy, but in Cambridge. So that puts a big question mark into things because everything else prior was gloss, glossless fire. I should just say it like that. That way no one can mess with my pronunciation because you know it's bad. Glossless fire. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of sound like, like Donald Duck or something. Cross that fire. Cross that fire. Okay. Um, so that certainly, let's see, where's, where is Cambridge to Gloucestershire? Sheer, Shaw, she, shu. <laughs> so like Sylvester the cat. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Cambridge. Oh, snap. Apparently, uh, apparently that was just too much for Google Earth. Just too much. Oh, okay. Jeez. All right. I guess I guess we're just getting to Google Maps. <laughs> uh, okay. Cambridge, UK. Oh, that's like that's like nowhere near it, is it? Where, how far is that? How far? Yeah, I mean, that's like... I mean, I guess that's like possible, but it certainly seems unlikely. 
You know, it's not, it doesn't rule it out, but it certainly puts a big question mark into it. Yeah. I mean, in the, it's the 1840s, people did start moving a bit around. I mean, people, that's the thing. People have been moving around a whole bunch, but it's certainly, it would seem odd that we know that they were living in Gloucestershire, <laughs> in Gloucestershire and uh, that they were living there before the marriage and after. So it's certain possible that they were moving around. And I guess maybe there's a University of Cambridge connection or something. I don't know, but. It just, it does, it does put a question mark. It, you know, is this truly them or is this just a case of, well, we're looking for a William Candy and an Eliza Elizabeth. So, yeah. Um, was she from Cambridge? Well, I think that's a big question that we need to figure out as well because um, it seems like with the, if it was that Phipps or whatever that they were in, Gloucestershire. So they were in Watton under edge is where that marriage is. And then let's see what it says for her parents. Uh, Cause I think it says where they live. So yeah, Phipps. Um, residence church street. So they're living on the same street in the same parish. So, I mean, it's possible she was born in Cambridge or something, and then then her family moved out here. But yeah, it's certainly it, it with with it being such. Since we're basically dealing with a contradiction, every little piece kind of adds or detracts. And so here with this, it's like it adds a bit in that. Okay, we do at least have a marriage between an Elizabeth or Eliza Anderson and a William Candy, but the location is completely not expected. Um, and then otherwise we have this Anderson and here we're looking at somebody in Cheshire, 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 <laughs> Cheshire, England, Cheshire, England. We might say where Tasha and John is. And that is nowhere near either of those. That's up near. Wait, where is that up? Is that up near Liverpool? Liverpool. Where is it? All right, just show me on the map. <laughs> just show me on the map. Cheshire. Cheshire. So yeah, so that's a so now that's throwing even more questions into what we have at least on WikiTree. And so I mean this, you know, I will say with the way that WikiTree does their trees in terms of they force you to put the 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 records and stuff like that, there is, you know, there is still the possibility of having wrong information put into WikiTree. But by forcing people to put this kind of stuff, it does make it where it's a quick sort of like, okay, something is odd here because we're looking at a family that should have been living in Gloucestershire. And then we have a birth in Cheshire. And then we have a, a marriage in Cambridge. You know, it's just, it's possible, but it's big red flags when we're already dealing with this, you know, question of, is it, you know, Phipps or Anderson? And I still kind of am leaning more towards Phipps because we do have a marriage record that then correlates to Gloucestershire. So, you know, it's like, I guess I'd be leaning, I'm leaning like 75% towards Phipps and 25% towards Anderson, um, personally. Uh, keep going north near Manchester. Cheshire near Manchester. It, did I say that one right? Manchester. It's not like Manchester or Manchester or something. Manchester. Uh, although I guess if it was or it'd be like, oh, you are like color. <laughs> uh, let's see. In my tree, many men married in the women birthplace and moved back to their place soon after and got kids there. Yeah, and that could very well be the case here. I'm certainly not discounting it, but it's certainly, you know, we need to consider all of the, all of what uh, helps push towards the hypothesis and all that takes away from which hypothesis 
1891 census, William Candy was born in Oxford, and almost all the children were born in Gloucestershire. Yeah, that. So yeah, so all kind of right in that same area. Uh, but the spouse's name does not match. Was that the one where the spouse was Rhoda? The other, the other wife. Or was that this William Candy? So okay. Um, uh, greeting from Lafayette, Louisiana. Hello, Mason. Thank you for coming in. Uh, you might have some problems with the maternal side because I believe his mother is Ukrainian. Oh, well, if his mother's Ukrainian, that's where I could possibly uh, shine, actually. And we've been focusing on this candy line. I'm guessing, Michael, you just jumped on, just jumped in. We've we've been completely focused on the candy line. So, all right. Well, I think, yeah, let's 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 go ahead and jump to the other side then. So we're looking at his mother. Van, so this is okay. So this is what they have on Genie, and yet yeah, we have Ukraine. Oh. Okay, random numbers calling me. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I always Google the numbers calling me to. Uh, Huh, okay. All right. Well, if that was a real person, then uh, they'll leave a they'll leave a message. <laughs> um. hmm. Okay. Okay, to okay. Um, all right. <laughs> Candy line sounds like a great metro line. Yeah, it sounds like one of those themed Japanese lines because, like, I, I or at least I've heard in Japan or China, I think they they like theme the cars. I want to say it was in Japan, but maybe it was in China. I could have been wrong. Um, spouse's name transcribed as Margaret E. Okay, yeah, E could be for Eliza. Uh, yeah, random numbers, Google. Okay, so let's jump into this Ukrainian side then, the maternal side, and then we could uh, we can dive into some of these uh, some of these records right. Here. Oh, come on, move over, Tab. What are you doing? You're drunk. There you go. That's what we want. These are the records we want to dive in. Yeah, we'll make it easy for those non. Uh, whatever speakers um yeah the archives the archives so and that's what the actual site looks like uh for those who want to check this out this is uh being posted right now i posted that in the chat So let's get into Evangeline. So I'm guessing it's not the acre line. It's this Stephanic and from Lviv. Well, how about that? What's a voicemail? I want to hear this out. Let's see. Who is this?
Whoops. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Funny enough, so apparently that was someone from the census? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I guess, uh, I don't know. I'll... They want to. They want information. I don't know. Is it really the census, or are they just trying to? Am I getting scammed? <laughs> He's a genealogist. We'll say we're from the census. He'll tell us everything. <laughs> Sounds legit. Yeah. Well, the the voicemail said something about that. I I guess I I should have received something in the mail from the official census. So I'll have to look through and see. And uh, my while I was out of town, I did hear that that uh, that happened that there was a census person that came by so i don't know i don't know people <laughs> okay um so we have this stefaniac family and coming into canada departing from london and antwerp Pretty big family there. So maybe enough to. Let's see what other people say. What do the others say? So born in Lviv. Um, where is the family? Stefaniak, right? Or was it Acres already then? What were we looking at? 1906. So yeah, Stefaniak. Oh, Don Nielka. Coming up is Danielka. And Galicia. No, nope, Galicia. Now present day Western Ukraine. Where Lviv is. They arrived 1904. Which I think that's what matches up with... Uh, See passenger lists 1905. Pretty pretty much right on. Okay. So we're looking at Lviv. So central state regional. Let's look at regional first. Um, and we're looking at what time frame are we mostly looking at? So we're looking at pre pre 1900s. Okay. Nothing good there. Runs of the former party archive. All right, let's go to the Central State Archives then. Um, huh. Not a ton of stuff that they have here.
<laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> what funds are we looking at here? We're going to have to see if there's a fund guide. Uh, can I read Cyrillic? Just barely. I can, I can read enough to recognize names and phonetically speak some of the stuff. Um, although this looks, this doesn't quite look, this looks more Polish. Is this Polish? Which makes sense. I mean, we're looking at the Galicia area. So let's Galicia region. So different than what you think of in terms of Spain. Covers this area. So present day Ukraine, present day Poland. Boom, right there. So Lviv, I think, kind of right there-ish. Right in the middle-ish. Right in the middle. Lviv. Lvov. So Lviv. So when we're talking um, Galicia, so jumping here, so you're talking kind of like over here-ish like sort of areas. So in my family, so the families that I live in were just outside that area. So like one of the towns my family lived in is Sokarani. Here we go right here. Which has had the uh, border jump a ton at times. So this is one of the lines my, my father's side's from. And then another one my father's side's from is in where is it? It's not too far. It's in uh, Venezia Oblast. Where's Venezia? There we go. It's called Talchin. It's somewhere over here-ish. It's somewhere. Somewhere around here. Talchin. Talchin. Yeah, I forgot exactly where... Yeah, so, all right, but main point being Lviv, all that, that's Galicia, and so it makes sense that we're looking at non-Cyrillic uh, stuff. Non-Cyrillic. Yeah, <laughs> damn European countries constantly moving around, screw up my genealogy. For anyone who has Balkan, Baltic, Eastern European ancestry, you need to know the history of the area, at least in general senses of, you know, what are some bigger, like what are the areas of the Lithuanian Polish Commonwealth? What are the areas of the Austro-Hungarian Empire? What are the uh, areas that were Yugoslavia? What were the areas of the Romanian Empire, the Russian Empire? And then throughout history, all the different little things and all that. One of the reasons why I absolutely love Sam Arano's videos, which for anyone who not familiar with Sam Erno's videos. He does uh, really great videos about uh, Jewish history. And a lot of that dives into Jewish history in a way that I've never seen spoken about where it talks in uh, terms of world history. And it really kind of, it almost brings together like what I always knew is Jewish history and then just kind of world history while they were connected in some ways. There was also, I don't know how to put it, but I guess it, it always seems slightly disconnected. Like, you know, there was world history and then there was Jewish history, but it didn't really seem to like overlap a lot. It was always kind of just separate and his videos kind of bring that together. And especially in a way where it shows with maps, how the areas change so much. Um, so yeah, in the Volinia area too. So sometimes Galicia, Austria, Russia, Poland, Ukraine, it was everywhere. Yeah, the border just jumping like crazy. Um, Poland, no Poland, Poland again, but different. No Poland, Poland again, but different again. Yeah, pretty much. 
And yeah, very similar, like all Alsace Lorraine, just bouncing back and forth, France, Germany, France, Germany. And I mean, all throughout the areas. I mean, look at the Schleswig Holstein region, which is the northern part of Germany now, it used to be the southern part of Denmark and jumped back and forth. I mean, there was what, like three or four various Schleswig Holstein wars. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's very much like that all throughout Europe. But it seems the further east you go, the more it seems to be like the lines jump even more crazily i guess you could say um control f to find things easier if they are transcribed tagged yeah that's that's a very useful tool for uh for if the document is actually like readable basically it's gone through ocr where you can actually search the text um my mother's father's family was Bialis, was from Bialystok, which was once part of Grodno, Belarus, in the Russian Empire. And the other side of my mother's family were from Berlad and Yash in the Moldova region. So, yeah, my family actually also uh, on my side, my Epstein line, no relation that I know of to the famous Epstein. But uh, my second great grandfather, Meyer Epstein, the records I have on him show he came from Grodno but his parents were Meyer Epstein and Libby Epstein and Grodno is a massive city and Epstein is a very common name. So that has been a huge brick wall in my family tree. But then also on my family side, that town that I just showed Sokorani, which was once part of, part of the Romanian empire. A lot of that family, as I've done more research and been able to flesh that out a big thanks to DNA testing. Um, I was able to find that there was a strong connection with Yash. Uh, which is now present-day Moldova. So Yasi, I know a lot of people will see it and say it like that. But one of the towns I actually know how to pronounce somewhat correctly, Yash. Um, I have Croatian blood, but I don't know where to look. They didn't keep these documents. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not familiar with Croatian genealogy. I mean, with how crazy things have been in the Balkans for the past 100 years, even more so than I think a lot of the rest of Eastern Europe and such, uh, just in the craziness of it all. Uh, I don't know what records are like, but that'd certainly be something that you might be able to find something you didn't realize beforehand by going to the family search wiki and seeing if they have something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Portugal just sat watching the rest of Europe. Well, you know, they kind of had their whole thing from 711 to 1492. So they kind of were already over it by, <laughs> by that time. They, you know, the Reconquista had been, re, they had reconquered and uh, nobody else had really gone in since. So they, they had their 700 years. Now it's Eastern Europe's turn. <laughs> uh, continental Portugal has one of the oldest borders in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Yash is in Romania though. Well, Yash is... Yeah, Yash is in Romania. What? Oh, when I said Yash in um, in in Romania, what I also meant uh, ugh, I was I, thinking Kishinev. Sorry. Yeah. So Yash, and then Kishinev over here. So yeah. Sorry, I was getting those. I kind of got those mixed up when I meant when I said that in Moldova. Yeah. So, but yeah, my family from Sokorani had a very strong tie to Yash. But then I had another side of my family, which was from Kishinev, which I actually have found some records on, uh, or at least we think, you know, there's always that question of no correlating records to make us confident. Um, okay, so, so yeah, so in terms of finding records on the maternal side, ah, oh, getting hiccups, excuse me. In terms of finding records on the, the maternal side, it certainly seems possible because we do have, oh, geez, we do have records from Lviv. But unfortunately, uh, it seems like we're probably dealing with a lot of stuff that would take really in-depth research. And this is, here, we're looking at stuff. This is really, well, these are 1400s, 1500s. Let's look at this. Confirmation of King Sidmund the First. That's so cool.
Oh. <laughs> of course, it gets. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Can't really look at it that much better. That's pretty cool, though. Um, getting into the 1700s. So, yeah, I mean, it's certainly possible. We just have to really go through and find. Um, have to figure out what records we might be able to find. Oh, that's the reading room. Yeah. What I'm kind of hoping is with this e archive to get something that tells me what these fonts because each fond, you know, oh wait, here we go. Description of the fund. The fund, the fond. All right, so we do have OCR, so we should be able to hopefully translate what we need to. No, we can't do that. Not So we want Lviv. We're going to need to pull out our Lexi Logos Cyrillic keyboard. And, uh, okay. Of course, it's going to be lowercase, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. So there we go. What should I go with? Okay, so nothing with it. Let's try this. Um, okay. Okay, there we go. We're getting somewhere. Okay, so first. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. So what are our funds? One twenty-seven. Okay, there we go. So we'll keep that there. Go back. Okay, four seventy five to four seventy eight. Okay, twos. Da 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 da. Do 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 do. Da 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 do. Boo 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 boo. Thank you. 
Speed term. Three term. So four seven five, four seven eight eight. Ah. Certainly don't make this easy. All right. Well, I, I I may not be getting a whole lot closer with everything, <laughs> but one thing's for sure is that at the very least, you all are seeing how much stuff is actually out there. It's just a matter of it now. You know, everything's getting digitized. Now we just need it to actually be searchable and easily findable so you gotta you have to go through all these little tricks and stuff to get it figured out sure bitch so all right yeah so i'm not gonna worry too much i think i'm kind of coming to to a close with this anyway so okay let's uh let me go through chat and see uh Okay. okay not much going on in chat just chatting about random stuff so yeah so didn't we didn't get a we didn't get into crazy crazy stuff today we found some really interesting stuff though um in term of in terms of john candy's tree we've definitely added a bit to genie there um but biggest question really right now is this elizabeth candy who truly was she yes gina you are correct map is new haven connecticut so yes new haven my family has a short but strong history with new haven my great grandfather having been one of the owners of the schubert theater oops did not mean to hit that button um So, all right. Well, yeah, I think I think we've built a good amount so far. And one thing I've considered with all these trees that I'm building of all these famous people and stuff is that, you know, we may come back to them. I know for a few, like Taylor Swift, I did two streams and some other random stuff. But, uh, you know, so we may come back, especially especially because I may here and there jump into some of these trees and see if I can build out anything to find anything that's like, Ooh, that'd be really worthwhile to talk about. Cause especially with like this Ukrainian side of his family, I don't know if this side was Radzinska seems more Polish. Okay. Galicia, Austria now Ukraine. So similar area. And then what about acres? So, okay. So basically the whole sides from the, galicia area so certainly possible to find information but could be very difficult could be very difficult um yeah Whew. one of the census guys saw this <laughs> Hey, you got my voicemail. I know you did. I saw you listen to it on stream. So, but yeah, it's, I don't know. It, 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 is, did anyone else get contacted from uh, the census? They, they were basically what he said was it had to do with um, they want to find information out about the inflation and I guess costs to different houses. And we were selected as a special house for some reason, which. There is that question in my mind of being a genealogist. There is always the possibility that if the census or something like that caught me on the right day, I might be like, oh, yeah, I might sign up for that. So I kind of wouldn't put it past myself to have signed up for some sort of a thing. But I also wouldn't be surprised if it's also some sort of a scam. So definitely need to look into it. So, but I mean, it's, a, you know, the guy said that it's a call interview thing or something. So, yeah. Um, 
I do get those in Canada. You usually get a letter first. Well, that's what he said. He said there was a letter that came in in the mail first, uh, which I have to look and see if we got that because we get a lot of mail. And while I'm the one that usually checks the mail, I do have a roommate who checks it every once in a while. But, I, you know, that kind of stuff he'd usually give to me anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, just a little bit under two hours today. Um, had some had some fun stuff that we got done. Uh, didn't really talk as much Roots Tech as I thought I might. I know I did the uh, Roots Tech reaction <laughs> last week. Or not last week, earlier this week. What am I talking about? Uh, but yeah, so thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Friday or rest of your weekend, wherever you are. Um, and then, you know, next week, hopefully should be back on a much more regular schedule. I'll have a new reaction. I'll do both live streams and then working very diligently to get a lot of new main channel videos out. So that includes some YouTuber family tree episodes, some random other idea stuff that I have. Um, and also a recap of my big Europe trip from last year to check out London and Amsterdam. And first time I had ever been across the pond, as everybody likes to say. So those hopefully will be coming out sooner than later, but you know, lots of stuff to work on, but thank you all for watching. You all have a wonderful time. Peace.